meeting of the City of Laurel Historic District Commission will come to order. Oh, had it. No. The qualifications of the members of the commission, the staff to the commission, and any consultants used are on file with the city and are hereby made a part of each and every application heard today. The guidelines and procedures adopted by the commission are also made a part of each and every application. Each application heard today is considered on its own merits and is not to be considered as establishing a precedent for any other application. Madam Secretary, will you call the roll? Chairwoman Blitz. Here. Mr. McSaney. Here. Councilman Les. Mr. Clacoon. Here. Mr. DiLorenzo. Mr. Dyer. Here. Mr. Hayes. Here. And we do have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to leave the approval of the minutes until <coughs> the end of the meeting to see if we get Mark comes in here if we can approve them at this meeting. And we're going to move along to agenda five first, which is <coughs> HDC 0472014 for 344 Main Street. Is there someone here for that? Hello. You can come have a seat right up here. And are you Mr. Christopher Hodge? Yes, I am. How are you all doing? Good. How are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And you want to put a parking pad in? Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Well, in the rear of the building, um, there's one already there, but it's just dirt and gravel. Mm -hmm. And it runs right alongside of a storage shed. So I just want to pretty much update it and pour concrete, a concrete slab there. Okay. And it's not, it's not very big. And where's the access point from the back alley or it has we have a gate there that allows entry to the backyard and also you can come along the city sidewalk around the front and have access that way okay. other questions or comments you're going to have the apron going into the alley uh, how are you gonna butt that into the alleyway I'm sorry you say the apron, the apron for the driveway yes. how are you gonna tie that in with the alley it's not going to well I want to say it's gonna slant down uh-huh the alley where the rock <coughs> because the alley is, is paved right but our concrete is not gonna to go to the paved portion because that's not our <coughs> property line right at the end of the property line we're gonna slope it off and then what? Um, and then just slope it so it can be so you can drive on it. Well, I mean, is there is asphalt there, there? No. So on the city alley, yes, but we're not going to touch that. Okay, so where your driveway ends and the asphalt begins, what's going to be there? What's there now? Dirt, just dirt and gravel. I want to say to stop maybe um, three feet prior to the asphalt. Uh huh. And then it, are you going to put a grass strip there, or no? No grass can grow right there unless you plant soil and everything. Um, Have you talked to the city about doing that? Yes, on numerous occasions I've came and um, actually an inspector came out and walked it through with me as well. Mm -hmm. Did. Do we know if they have any plans? To well, that comes after our process. So once once we approve what he's doing, then right. um, they'll look at it for the building purposes. Well, not the building, but I'm just talking about, you know, basically he's going to end it three foot from short. Short. So there's going to be a space there of gravel or dirt or grass or whatever. So I don't know. Are they going to pave this pad for parking? Yes. I think the I think the main question is okay. You have a pad in the back now. Where do you access the pad? From the alley, right? From the alley. If you're coming down, I don't recall the name of the street, um, the alley. But if you're coming down the alley or cut through the parking area beside the building, then you can turn right onto the parking strip there. Right. Well, I understand that, but when you finish your work, mm -hmm. and then there's still the paved alley. And in between that, it could be mud or dirt or... Right whatever. now, it's just gravel, small gravel and dirt. 
Now, if you all would like, I could extend it to the asphalt. That wouldn't be up to me. That would be up to the city. But I would think that where you finish <coughs> should butt up to the asphalt. Um, you know, whether it, you stop it at the property line, they bring the asphalt to there, or you bring the driveway out. I don't know. But I, I don't think you would just stop it there and then have an unfinished piece. For appearance purposes, I agree. I think it would look better to take it to the asphalt. Uh -huh. um, but again, like I said, something I would have to take over with the city. I mean, I don't have, I'm not opposed to the pad being there. I'm just wondering. It could be a maintenance issue. Well, when he gets too. his paving permit, he'll have to submit um, drawings and like how he's going to do that on that end. I mean, the permit won't go forward if it's not going to meet the building conditions that it needs but if we approve For purposes i know what you're saying what are we going to do between the end of the paving and the road right i mean it has to be either as it either has to be blue chip stone you have to fill in that with something or you're just going to have a deeper and deeper right. deeper mud hole right who who owns that strip um actually the one of those majority of percentage is a doctor out of texas that owns that little strip that owns the property oh, i'm sorry i'm thinking about the property but that strip i don't know i think it belongs to the city you think it's a city sonny i don't know what the what the distance between the road and where he bought his property i don't know what that who owns that distance in there mm -hmm. Isn't it the middle of the alley? Doesn't don't those property lines or maintenance go to the middle of alleys when you have an alley? No, they're different. Up? They're different depending on the alley. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I do know that um, down the street. I can't think of the address, but they also have the concrete slab there as well. And there's in, and you have the gravel, and then you have the asphalt. Okay. So if we approve this tonight, the city is going to take a look at this and and what have the final say. Yeah, on if this is approved tonight for the aesthetics of what he's doing. Right. Then his next process is a permit for a paving. So when he, when he submits that paving permit, he has to give dimensions um, and how he's going to build it. Now, if if I guess the question is if gravel is the way to go between the end of that concrete slab and the road would he be willing to do that i mean <clears throat> or road alley whatever Even I mean, there should be a natural transition from the concrete and I don't know if there's a setback from the alley to where your concrete slab is I mean that's out of my element as to what goes on in there but normally that is all handled at a building permit time frame you know mm -hmm. where how far he can go up to the road alley it's a road whether it's in the alley or not or um, what filler he would have to use in there I mean, what's the next natural thing would be an apron, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which is a sloping and goes right. wide like it does for a driveway. So I guess the question is, which of those things? For various <clears throat> purposes, I, instead of using the gravel, I think that um, pouring the concrete to meet the asphalt will look a lot better. Because over time, wear and tear is going to continuously push the gravel below grade right. anyway. It will, re it will require maintenance Correct. every year, really. Or if the city doesn't allow you to go past your uh, property line then bring the asphalt to the apron right. to the end of the apron so you're saying come off of the asphalt of the city's property and bring it to my apron right bring it to your property line or okay. or if they allow you to extend your apron past your property line to the uh, blacktop okay but I don't know whether they would allow that. If not, the main oh, focus is to keep it uniform. Either come with the asphalt so to the concrete the, or take the concrete to the asphalt. Uh, right. That would be my recommendation on that. But and I'd make I, that a condition then. 
Okay. On on the application, I'll make it a condition that yes, um, there has to be a well, transition in there of one. either yes, gravel yeah. is there, is, is filled to where the um, setback is, if there is such a thing there, mm -hmm. or to do an apron with the gradual oh, sloping of the concrete. And would that fall under um, the maintenance department, or would that be building? Yeah, that would be building. It would be built because we do the paving. Oh, oh you do the After paving too. Okay. <coughs> Well, I don't know. Okay, I don't know if there's any other questions. You want to make it with the. Uh, Anybody have any more questions? No, I'm sorry. We're just okay. placing it in our minds. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, pouring of the concrete slab uh, HDCO 47 2014 with uh, the amendment that the concrete apron would be tied into the asphalt alley whether that's bringing the concrete out to the uh, asphalt or uh, bringing asphalt to the concrete apron second madam secretary of a motion on the floor to approve hdc 0472014 as stated by mr clacoon seconded by mr hayes would you call the roll please Mr. Clacoon? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. McSaney? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. And Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you for coming in. I'm going to go down to HDC 0492014 for 106 St. Mary's Place. <clears throat> Hello. And can you state your name, please? Uh, my name is Chester Higdon. Oh, hello. I thought you looked familiar. Good to see how are you? you? Long time. I'm and how Father are you? Mike Maloney. Nice to see you. And let's see. You're going to be wanting to build a wood fence enclosure for the new bin ordinance. And uh, tell us just a little bit about it. Well, the bin has been there for mm -hmm. the last, I don't know, for 10 years anyway, um, it, where the, the people come and put in clothes for the poor. Mm -hmm. We have an existing enclosure around a dumpster in the same area. Mm -hmm. And what we're proposing to do is is just add a, 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 an additional mm -hmm. back and, and, a, and a side then to enclose the, the uh, uh, donation bin as well. Well, it's gonna be a second. You're gonna leave the first one there. I Right. The first one's there. I don't think that's. Yeah, well, I just oh, I just had in my head that it was gonna, uh, it was, <clears throat> you were gonna replace that one. Yeah, because it's not, it's not in real good shape. So you're just gonna put. Well, I, just, but when we do all this, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and, it, it's a good opportunity to fix it up at, yep. as we're going along. I think so too. Sure. Okay. Yep. And it's going to be. Behind the two by fours. I think what it's it's basically a six by six post uh, with four by four um, um, uh, framing, and then the, then the, the one by okay. siding. It's kind of way off the street because I was driving around looking to try to find it. So I didn't yeah, It's up it. within the school uh, parking, parking lot. Parking lot. Yeah. Yes. No, it's it's. I kind of saw that. Basically the enclosed structure is just going to follow the contour of the uh, chain link fence yes so it's going to <clears throat> basically something like that yeah and we're repairing that chain link fence this 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 summer as well um straightening it up and it needed some a little bit of loving so uh, TLC. yeah we're gonna we're gonna fix the whole the whole thing up okay. <coughs> yes sir Madam Chair, <clears throat> I move that we approve HDC 049-2014 as yeah. presented. So I'll second it. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 049-2014, uh, made by Mr. McSaney and seconded by Mr. Dyer. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. McSaney? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Mr. Cook-Coon? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries.
Okay. Thank you, so thank much. you, very, thank you much. very much. Good thank luck. you for your time. Okay. And we have HDC 052-2014 for 12 C Street. Hello. Are you Miss Cat King? I'm Catherine Parzielli. Nice to meet you. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. This is Rose King. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you? And you're going to be putting some hardy board siding in your Yes. Uh, we actually brought pieces of it to show. Excellent. You can just bring them up The here. original house has this old aluminum siding, and there are many places on the house that needs repair. So the closest that we were able to find is the hardy board siding. And the paint color that's on this one piece over here match as close as we could get to the house color that was originally there when the house was actually purchased back in 98. Mm -hmm. So with this, um, as pieces need to be repaired, we're finding that you know when we actually paint it, it looks like it doesn't quite match as well as it should so where we're replacing certain places we're actually replacing that whole side so uh, we're actually improving the structure of the house that we feel by using the hardy board and, and would like permission to continue with doing that so um, if I need to bring this up for you to look at I'll be happy to do that. Do you want to see it? I can see it. You can see it? It's fine. We like the, we, we're familiar with it. Okay great. With the product so. So you're going to be doing the whole, one whole side of the house? Um, where it needs to be repaired. I'm not sure how many places on the actual home needs to be re repaired, uh, but every place that needs to be repaired, whether it has a dent or whether it actually has a hole or something like that, we're looking to replace it with the hardy. Okay. But you, you had said something about you were going to do one whole side. Is that just where it needs to be repaired. The repair, if, if the repair itself does not look aesthetically good just by replacing a, a panel or two, then we, we're being forced to do the whole thing. Right. How, how does that tie in together with the existing aluminum? Actually, um, the, the, the borders of the side um, allow for a transition so that um, if we're doing one side, then there's another side coming this way so that it never it's not right on top of each other. So it, it doesn't create any kind of um, problem with the way that it looks. With the symmetry and, of it. And we've actually stepped back and looked at it and said, well, no, it looks like we can't just replace this one piece. We have to then do the whole piece. But we're not, uh, if, a, if a side of the house is OK, because there's so many angles to the house. Mm -hmm. So basically, the way that the house is is that if we do one section, but we leave this section alone because it is okay, it hasn't caused a problem with us looking at it. But we'll paint it if it's next door and it doesn't look right. We're actually going to be painting it. So that helps to blend it but together. If, okay, but if you replace one bad piece, you're going to replace it from the edge of yes. the wall to yes. the edge it's of the wall, no matter whether it's a... Yeah, it's not going to be okay. just a chunk. It's okay. going to be the whole piece, and it's going to be the whole run of that, of that section okay. so that it will be continuous. Okay. And... So usually, uh, I guess you, you start low and work your way up. That is how. So, do. if you have a piece that's five foot up or whatever, are you going to replace from the bottom up to that point? Yes, we are. Okay. Actually, I'm Charles King. Yes, sir. And this aluminum siding from 1970, you can't get it anymore. So as we take some off the side, if we get good pieces, we'll use that to repair it. Uh, in an effort not to do the whole house in hardy siding. <clears throat> I don't think we have to because the aluminum siding is still pretty good. But when we go up, we just keep on going to the roof line. So when, the, when this metal meets the hardy siding, it looks great together. Because you have a border. Because it's got these little uh, corners on right. them, or, or we put trim on it that goes up <coughs> one by four in the corners inside. Looks very nice. You guys would be very happy with it if you saw it. Okay. The idea behind hardy siding is to make the building look better. 
and try to make it match. We don't want to, we don't want to hardy side the whole building and be expensive. We just want to fix the bad parts and this is the best solution. You can hardly, you can't even tell. We've already repaired several spots. You can't see the difference really. Looks good, very nice. <clears throat> but uh, it, it would be mostly it would be mostly like a patching type of job, mm -hmm. or it's going to be an improvement you, to the building. Okay, but so if we see an area, there's an area that's six feet in the air, right? Or a scissors stuck into the siding, right? I mean, I don't really know how to fix it. Pull the scissors out, maybe bondo it, and then paint the side of the building. Um, yeah, there's other areas that are dented from kids being in that building prior to me owning it. So that must be prior to 98. So from 1970, once you dent aluminum, it looks bad. So the Hardy's planking will go in place of anywhere there's damaged stuff around the bottom, mostly. But we found that as we're going up, um, well, once we take that aluminum off, we just need to keep on going to the roof line. So it meets nice in the corners, it looks good, but we don't want to put five feet up of hardy planking and then have it go up and look hokey. Okay. But that building okay, so, looks so, nice. So what you're saying is that if one of the, one of the sides, there, there, there was some damage, you would go all the way up? All the way to the roof line. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then we would paint the building to match. Okay. So I really didn't like the mustard color but actually it's growing on me now. <laughs> I I, as, we, as we put the hardy plank siding on, if you see, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but these colors are really close. Mm -hmm. They are. Yep. Mm -hmm. They this are. Raw hardy planking. So when okay. we put this first piece on, once we made a repair, we said, oh, we like the color. We don't even have to paint it. So, but you have to protect this. It's, it's porous and water will get into it. So we went to Home Depot and we had them, took them a piece of that. They put it in their little uh, machine, <coughs> made us some paint. We painted it and it looks good. We like it. Yeah. We like the color of the house now. It's nice. I think it's nice. We're okay with it. We don't really care what color it is, but I like it. And we have some other things we're gonna be, what? You don't like it. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's it. We work well together. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of thinking, I don't have a problem with what you're doing. Um, I just have a problem with the description of the work on the application. It kind of implies they're just going to do the whole house. Yeah, I'll change. So that. if you could change I it. I we're doing the whole house. Uh, well, Sorry. Catherine thought we were going to do the whole house. Okay. That's why she implied that, because, and that's why I was explaining to her. I said, Catherine. Okay. Well, let's I just. I don't want to do the whole house now. Okay. If I have to, I will. Well, okay. Well, let's let's just get the application to indicate what you now intend to do that we can approve. Uh, and if you do more, that's okay. Well, right. we can come back and see you guys again. You're going to be here every month, right? Yeah, absolutely. Except we, we take a couple of months off. Except for all. <laughs> all right. Well. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So you amend that. <clears throat> yeah, I'll amend the um, certificate. Okay. okay. Any and other questions? Do we know a percentage that you're going to do now? I would say that fifty percent, maybe, or forty. Forty percent. Okay. There's some big areas that we don't need to get into. And if we don't need to touch them, fine. But when we get done with the 40%, if we can't stand it and we love it so much, <laughs> we will take the other aluminum siding off and complete the building okay. to make it look nice. Because I've owned it for 15 years, I'm gonna to continue to own it, and I want it to look nice. Good. I haven't been able to get to it lately, but I'm here now. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move that we uh, approve uh, HDC 043, whoop, I'm sorry, wrong one, uh, 052 2014, uh, amended um, as stipulated regarding the uh, amount of uh, siding to be replaced. Do I have a second? 
I'll second. second. I'll second it. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 0522014 as stated by Mr. Hayes and seconded by Mr. Cocoon. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Hayes? <coughs> yes. Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Mr. Maxini? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. I we had something else very good. <laughs> then you're good to go. I appreciate you coming in, and I hope we'll see you come back. Okay. Would, what? Where are we going? We're done. Do they want to add I thought we were going to talk about the roof. Just Another time. Another time. Oh. We're not going to talk about the roof. Actually, you're doing the roof in kind, is my understanding, and it's already been staff approved. It is correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I have the... You can give those to me if you would, oh, and yeah. then I'll have them. That, yeah. It's all been taken care of already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're all done. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you can go think up some more stuff. We are going to That's right. <laughs> Old houses is never ending. Okay, I guess we'll move on. Do you think we could do Joanne's without her being here? Okay. Um, I think we can. I think that we can, or something. Maybe something came up. Yeah. 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 I see. <clears throat> must have forgotten. I think that gives it. Has I? Have you looked at the? Have you looked at the tray? Yeah. 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 It's it's uh it's infringing. That's fine. Yeah, and it's it's a mulberry tree. Okay. Right. So yeah, okay. Can consider that. No, really. Right. It's not this big one in the picture. No. It's this. Yeah. This is mulberry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's because. From the picture, it looks like they were going to remove that. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Right. Okay. Which that's not a mulberry, but right. That's correct. <clears throat> you know, the roots to a mulberry go as deep as it is tall. Hmm? Oh well, they they are a devil to kill. Yeah. They the roots to a mulberry to go. As we're deep going to as move forward with this. No kidding. With yeah. Joanne here. Does it have a tap root? Very few agreement. trees have tap roots anymore. Well, that's on the weed uh, side of bush of trees. Yeah, right, that's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's cut and dried, really. It's a mulberry tree, after all. It's not like it's right. something major. So we are moving on. We'll, we'll describe it, I guess, or have Sonny present it. That, um, certificate number HDC 0432014 for 313 Laurel Avenue. Um, removal of some mulberry trees that are on the fence line between Laurel Avenue and Lars. And although the applicant isn't here, we're looking, it seems to be a pretty cut and dried application. Madam <coughs> Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, I move that we approve HDC 043-2014 uh, as presented. I'll second it. <coughs> Okay, Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 0432014, made by Mr. McSaney, seconded by Mr. Dyer. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. McSaney? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Okay. Here we go. Without having to make them wait another month. Uh, we'll move on to staff approvals. Any questions about any of these? <clears throat> okay. If we can move on to the minutes, I don't believe we have enough commissioners to approve the May 6th minutes, but I think we can approve the March 18th ones. Any questions or comments on those particular minutes? Mr. McSeen? I just have a, <coughs> have a question. At the bottom of both of these minutes, it says minutes approved dash capital S, S, capital E, capital P. Separately? They're not approved. What happens is from the minutes before being approved and um, when I was doing because we overlay whatever's in there that was on the bottom and I never even noticed yes because they're the, not approved. exactly the, one of them are approved. both of them say that they were approved on 
on March the 18th, one and one of them didn't take place until uh, May something. When it goes out to the web page, it'll have the correct date on it. Good. <clears throat> so I guess we're just information for the March 18th. If there no other does, so, do, does somebody sign these minutes? No. Don't we sign these minutes or something? We don't. Tax credits. It's always tax just been credits. that it's been approved, and I'm endor I'm saying they were approved at the um, meeting, and the minutes oh. back it up. So. Okay, that's fine. Do you have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2014 meeting? <clears throat> Move approval. Second. Oh, I, yeah. Well, yeah, I'll second. <laughs> And we'll hold the other ones, right? Yes, please. We have a motion on the floor to accept the minutes for the March the 18th, 2014 meeting made by Mr. Dyer and seconded by Mr. McSaney. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Dyer? Yes. Mr. McSaney? Yes. Mr. Clacoon? Here, abstain. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Abstain. And the motion carries. Thank you. Should we leave these here? For the next time would that be better for you you want to hold on to these uh <clears throat> may minutes and we can move on to new business it's been, it's been brought to my attention that there's some talk of not having cafes down on Main Street because the ordinances don't really allow for enough width to have tables and chairs and alfresco dining and stuff on the street, but some thought has come up that people may want to go up and think about putting um, outdoor dining on the rooftop. Hmm. Um, it's been brought to my attention that there may be some, you know, uh, qualifications for some sort of railing or, you know, for safety factors of people being on the roof, um, structural assessments and everything aside. It was just our, uh, what our thoughts on something like that would be um, just from the HDC point of view. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Which block? Hmm? Which block? But we have Miss Alicia here. <laughs> Which well, block? <laughs> this is Alicia Hello. Fields. Come up here and up. sit and talk to us. <laughs> So um, I was thinking about it and I was riding down Main Street as I do every day. And um, our, our rooftops are flat, uh, and many of them anyway, mm. and not so high. And it's been done before, rooftop seating, and so it's been a conversation. And I uh, just mm. wondered where you guys would stand with that so that we can be as competitive as possible with our Main Street. <clears throat> I think it's a great idea actually I was just over at uh, one of these yogurt places and, and they had um, outside seating and it's amazing on a night like last night how wonderful it was and there was a lot of community and a lot of you know you, you wonder how many people are is that a destination or is it because there's other stuff and they happen to be there but either way it's it's a nice feature to have and it's it just uh, as you're going by, it, it also makes people want to say, oh, wow, look at that, you know, we can, looks like fun, you know, it's, it's, it looks it like. It is a, an attraction, and, and yeah. outdoor seating in, in weather like this, or maybe just a little slightly cooler, <laughs> <laughs> is really awesome, and even when the weather cools, uh, many places have the heating lamps uh, outdoors, oh, yeah. and that works well as, 
you know, also. So um, I, I, I think that people really enjoy it and it gives them an alternative to what we don't have in terms of sidewalk availability. I think it could be made, you know, to be very attractive, but I, I think we'd have to be careful on the precedence, uh, precedence set. Well, and I think that's what it's, that's what we're all about. We're all about, you know, keeping things, you know, looking as they do. And, and with a good design element, you, you can do that. I mean, it's, I don't think it's that difficult. I'm sure they would have to have, like, structural reports done right. to well, make I sure the... Speak with, um, well, my, my first go-to, uh, I, I, this, this program is facilitated out of community planning and business services. So my first go-to before Paul coming back was Jack. And um, then Jack thought it was great, but said, go talk to Dave Pope. So I went to go talk with Dave, and he said it was fine, as long as the building you know, has the structure in sure. place. <coughs> That's just um, yeah. And uh, so he, he thought it was fine. And he said, even if a building doesn't currently have the structure in place, they can put what needs to be put yeah. in place. Right. In order right. to they could. Like that. Yeah. Uh, and then my next step was to speak with uh, Lori, you know, to mm -hmm. find out what the Historic District Commission's perspective would be on it from an aesthetic perspective and, and everything else. And I said, we all had to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually Googled uh, rooftop dining in mm -hmm. Historic District. Oh, cool. And, what and they up? exist. Um, sure. oh, yes. Washington, DC. They're all over DC. They mm -hmm. exist. <laughs> and I printed off a couple articles. I don't remember the other places, but because I got kind of reading um, the comments from the um, clientele more than how the structure right. worked. Right. <laughs> right. You know, we had a wonderful place to like go. You just said, all right, here's a good place to go. Best food, yes. <laughs> I'll stop the personal part of it. I forgot what I was doing. But. Um, it's interesting when you do Google something and, and it exists and right. you're like, you know, you think you're going to get nothing on it. But I was surprised to see that there were a number of rooftop dining places right. in historic districts. I mean, um, even in Baltimore, if you go up, people have just their own personal little rooftop gardens on top of some of the buildings. So it can be done very attractively. My only thought was that in putting, and certainly they're going to have to put some sort of railing or something up that it might not should be at the very edge of the building mm -hmm. because you know we have some that have the the front that's like a little elevated or that I'm mm -hmm. sure some regulations would probably say there would have to be a setback from the edge of the roof in a number of feet and that would probably also either make it eas easier our job easier to do by how much you could see it um, really from the street level or from the street I guess well, it would it depend on the building. In, in all of our little city of law here, we don't have much outside seating. I That's mean, right. I used to go to Don Pablo because it was the only place that had mm -hmm. the outside seating. Meanwhile, their service was not fantastic. I would just go because it had the outside seating. Right. It was so nice near the lake and, you know, just to be outside. Um, and the only place that I know of where we have it currently on Main Street is that Olive on Main, the new restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and they don't have it up and go. They've got some structural things that they've right. got to do there before. They you know about the inside um, court that they have there? Yeah. Right. They right, have. right. So I think it would be wonderful if it's doable. Yeah. I, I'm supportive of, of the concept, certainly, and especially if you were to go on a case by case basis, you know, building by building. Right. Uh, my only concern would be we may need to do something with our current regulations. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, do something to change to the regulations it, right. to to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, come up with some sort of standards uh, for what type of railing, how far it's set back, and so, and so forth. Which is people would have a <coughs> criteria <coughs> as well. So yeah, one issue we dealt with in the past is is um, access to a second or third floor, like you know, at uh, mm. uh, the um, the hair place next to 513 Main Street. Let's see, so it'd be probably five, um, 511 Main Street where there's a hair place. And there's, I think there's an apartment up above it. And there was a lot of conversation about, about the, the staircase, stairs. the staircase and what it had that would be covered and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's, a, yeah. it's partially a fire issue and I can't remember what else. Well, I think that there are some other things that we would need to explore from a code perspective. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but just as an idea perspective, it seems like everyone is kind of on board with it. But I think from a code perspective, we do have to explore yeah. also mm -hmm. handicap accessibility. Sure. Um, so, it, so I think that we have to work out the kinks on it. Right. But uh, just as a general concept, if it's something that we can move forward on in terms of working out the kinks. Mm -hmm. and, and right. I think, oh yeah, I think it would be great. I think it's interesting and, and new, and that's the kind of things we need to do. I think okay. it would. And we would hear, you know, each one would be considered individually, right. like all of our applications right. are. Yeah, because each of the buildings is different, and it would have to look, for us, really, a, a big part of it is how it's going to, mm -hmm. how it's going to look and fit in. Right. Well, I'm with you 100%. Cool. Yeah. I live in a historic district, and I appreciate the historic value. Um, you know, I, I see these proprietors on a daily basis, um, some who want to change their doors or, you know, this kind of a thing. And I tell them all the time, you're in a historic district. If you want it to be someplace more modern, then you yeah. should move someplace right. more modern. But Sometimes the realtors don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Story yeah. Time. Story <laughs> time. celebrate the charm of the historic community and, uh, you know, and, and, and that's what it is. We want our signage to reflect that. And, mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm on your team with regard to that. Super. I'm sure Alicia finds this too. They're so proud and so tickled that they're doing new and it's going to look so much better. Yeah. And I said, oops, you're using the wrong word when you're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> they do not want to hear new. Do you have a lot of inquiries about opening restaurants on Main Street? You know, or? it's really picked up. Um, uh -huh. Prior to my coming on board, there had person, a designated person to, for this project, um, but it's really picked up quite a bit, I can tell you that. And also, um, as the properties come available for lease, right. I've had some um, some storefront uh, owners, building owners, really want to work with me in terms of uh, identifying the businesses we'd like to have there, mm -hmm. which will generate foot traffic. Um, but so far, um, we have a, a company that does ICs. The ICs, like read the ICs. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and I think they're going to move forward. I know today I got the word that um, the the um, application had been sent over for them to get their credit check and all that other stuff. Um, and uh, then we have someone interested in maybe opening up a comedy cafe, which I think would be welcome to Main Street because often when I'm out, and I say Main Street, people say, where the comedy club used to be, it's mm -hmm. sort of like the claim to fame. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that it'll be something that's welcome. It'll, it'll ring familiar with a lot of people. Uh, we also have someone interested in a yoga studio. And it would be actually the, the space that they're looking at is in the same building as the IC, the IC shop, who will also be doing like um, like veggie drinks. Right, like juice, a juice, juice bar. Right, mm -hmm. juice bar. Um, so I think that would be a terrific compliment. Um, so we do, we have lots of increase. Actually, we just had a um, use and occupancy um, approved for a new bookstore. And the bookstore will be across the street from Olive One Main. Oh, wow. And so it'll be books and All right. She's uh, So we, we've got movement. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got this movement. Is what we need. There, there's still some resistance. Uh, people want change, but don't necessarily want to do their part to help us get there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, but that, I think, will come over time. The, the only reason I was asking is what we've run into in the past a lot with these old buildings is they don't have the plumbing and the sewer to uh, sustain right. a, a restaurant. Now, let me ask, are you guys familiar with all of the grants and matching loans and so on and so forth? I've heard somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the reason for them is to help with that, mm -hmm. for the building that up. Yeah. So, um, so we, we do know that, and so the, the grant is a startup and relocation grant. It's a reimbursement grant mm -hmm. for up to ten thousand dollars. So I can tell you that the um, health food store mm -hmm. that is now moving. You guys know that too. The health food store is moving, but when she moved in, she had all the plumbing done, and that was a part of the grant. Mm -hmm. And it was just a little over four thousand dollars that we gave her in reimbursement to have the plumbing in. So for the next person who comes in, it's there. that's one less thing that they have to do. They're all right. set up mm -hmm. for a kitchen in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what the, the grants and the <coughs> loans are for. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. to help out with that. Awesome. Good, good deal. Sounds good. Well, thank you for coming in so yeah, we could ask you all these questions. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> I just happened to pop in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you for having me. Thank Thanks. you. are welcome. Have a good evening. Anyone else have any new business? No other new business? Oh, oh, did anybody, uh, everybody, anybody here <clears throat> last evening watch uh, Channel 4 News? Uh, on the Boys and Girls Club? Mm -mm. No. Did they win? Did they win? No, I s no, I no, they guess didn't I win. didn't. Tell me no. what happened. <clears throat> uh, Child Four did an expose. Uh, uh, there, there is operating in the Boys and Girls Club certainly one and probably two schools. They've talked about having schools in there. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the subject was a basketball player who was uh, uh, in one of the schools and uh, they interviewed him and he's never been to a class. Uh, secondly, um, if the school is a, affiliated with a church, it doesn't fall under the supervision of the school system. Uh, and so the, the Boys and Girls Club took the tax identification number of a church that they were working with Good. and used that. Um, <laughs> they interviewed the uh, director of the Boys and Girls Club in their computer room, uh, and they asked if the computers worked. And the guy said, no, the computers don't work. They don't have internet and computers. It was pitiful. In other words, it's a scam. It was pitiful. Wow. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Mm. And for those that don't know, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the Boys and Girls Club uh, got a grant from the Maryland Historical Trust, which puts a, uh, uh, an encumbrance on the building, uh, just like the city has one on the armory and the museum. So before you can do anything, uh, uh, you have to get permission from the Maryland Historic Trust if you're doing anything, well, in our case, in the museum, inside or outside. <clears throat> I think probably in the, in the, I don't know about the armory, um, but for the Boys and Girls Club, uh, before they can do anything, they have to get permission. Uh, and in addition to that, the, the state comes around periodically and inspects the building. So the Maryland Historical Trust sent an inspector to the building. Uh, the first bad thing that happened is that there was no one there, but the door was unlocked, so the guy went in and made his inspection. And he came out with an armful of repairs that have to be made, obviously some of them from the, you can see from the front, uh, and a bunch of others. And uh, uh, so I've had a couple of conversations with the inspector. and. Uh, it's really, I mean, you know, we have trouble dealing with property maintenance, uh, and they do too. Uh, but uh, we've gotten as far as uh, they've written them a letter and say they've got to make corrections. But I think most of us know the Boys and Girls Club doesn't have any money to make the, the corrections. And they probably can't get grants, especially after all this publicity. So uh, it's going to take a while, I guess, but I think eventually, I think the state of Maryland will take them to court. To repair the building? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, and, and really you know, they're not going to be able to repair the building. That way. So I don't know, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. What the answer is there, but I'm glad that well, something's some moving. people yeah. are on it. Yeah. That was my concern. Yeah. Well, that being said, there's nothing else. Can we have a motion uh -huh. to adjourn? Please. Uh, you have some? Yep, I did. What? I don't know if when I was absent or not, between the two boulevards, across from, um, I call it Supreme Lading, because I don't know what the place is now, call center, there was an empty lot, and they put crushed stone over half of it, and then they lined the parking lot. Where park. is this? It's in the 200 block of Main Street, between North and South Route 1. 
south side. Uh, on the Across north side. From that from call center. center. Yeah. Next to the bank? Next no. to the old bank. The old bank. Between there. the bank and the peach tree building. It was a grass lot before where the cars parked. Mm -hmm. Right. So well, they, now it's all, now it's all now it, Half of the lot is like crushed rain. stone, crushed asphalt. And then after they smoothed that out, then they painted parking lines on there. Oh, interesting. Who owns that lot now? Do you have any The idea? fella with the call center. Oh, the, where's the call center? In the back? In the old Supreme Lighting Building. Oh, across the street. Okay. Yeah. That's a call center. Yes. Well, that's so I didn't interesting think too. that they had gotten approval, but I had missed a few meetings, so I wasn't sure. I mean, I don't even know what they're doing now. I mean, it, they had parked cars there before, or right. next car had, or somebody had, but and the grass was always growing tall, mm -hmm. so it doesn't look that bad. But it just I didn't know uh, right. what the what the deal was with uh, the crushed stone and then <coughs> painting the crushed stone. Well, somebody had a half a load of crushed stone. Okay. <laughs> so. Sonny will look into that. Okay, and then the only other question I had was about mulberry trees. <laughs> Do we need to bring those before the commission? I mean, are there any mulberry trees in the city that we want to preserve? I don't think any of them are champion trees, so we should be all. <laughs> and no one that hangs clothes on the line wants to preserve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would think that that's. Side Something of a weed that could be a there's a legal of term people. called res ipsa loquitur. The thing speaks for itself. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's uh, a I think you're right. An example of that. But would they have to come before us still, or? Normally. It's kind of a trash I, I, tree. I think so. I had a mulberry growing up in the Great holly stuff. tree in front of 109, and I mean, we cut it out. Is, we is, took um, a, took it out. <laughs> Place of what's being taken down. So if you almost know that mulberry trees are something that one will pop the best up by trees itself. to have in the yard, then what's I'm going to say it back there, and then we're going to come up here, and you guys are going to say it up here. So I mean, it's up to you. So like this one, it was in the fence row, and the majority of the mulberry trees are in fence rows or yeah. growing in other bushes right, or right. trees. I mean, it's Places more like it's just a big bush, be. isn't it? I mean, it's. Well, it can be a tree. I understand. It can be a big tree, but it's usually just a trash right. tree. As we tree, sit yeah. here, there's about 50 stalks in the yard starting from all berry right. trees, about this tall. Then they're about that tall. Then the right. they might be, right. and they are not easy to get up. No. And, um, yeah. Not easy to like a weed. get away from. Yes. I just didn't know whether we needed to approve to remove those or not. I mean, I can understand trees. Well. I mean, can we decide unanimously just to say that they can be staff approved or do some changes need to be made to the guidelines <coughs> or to something? I mean, probably in the 10 years, almost 10 years that I've been here, we've had maybe two mulberry trees. Right, it hasn't been many. I mean, come before us, yeah. Yeah, come before us. I mean, for that reason, I that mean, we are going well, it didn't uh, take a long time. So, many of them we don't, we never hear right. about. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I so think. Okay. Let's yeah. leave it, was just, it was just a question. Let's leave him go. Okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Thank you.